Explore is a database of information about how the UK benefits system and welfare system is administered and used. Um, in this video, I'm going to walk through how to use Stat Explore to get data on welfare, which is an area that's probably underreported and um, there are lots of interesting stories that we can tell about it. Now to find Stat Explore, you search for Stat Explore. Um, you can see the address here, but it's quicker to find on Google. You'll see there's no E in Explore, although you will probably still find it if you include the E. And you'll notice here the Department for Work and Pensions is the um, body that's responsible for producing this. This is the body that administers benefits, welfare, pensions, child benefits, things like that. And you'll see there's a user guide here which tells you a little bit more about it. But let's click through to Stat Explore. And the first thing that you might be struck by is this um, large area in the upper right inviting you to log in. Now that might put you off initially. Um, you might think uh, you might not be bothered going through a registration process, but actually you don't have to log in. There is a guest login option here, and that's quite a, a good way to get into the tool because if you do go through the guest login, um, you will be taken through a, a guide on how to use Stat Explore at that point as well. So this is what Stat Explore looks like. As I said, the, the first time you log in as a guest, you will get a, a series of, of um, guides that walk you through, but we're not going to do that here. You can see that down the left hand side are a number of folder icons and within each of those a number of um, cubes which represent databases. And so we have data about alternative claimants about something called attendance allowance, something uh, called the benefit cap and so on. You can see that this is in alphabetical order. So if you're interested in child maintenance, that's down there. And we might go right to the bottom to find out things like sanctions, state pension, universal credit, work capability assessment. So there are lots of um, different types of data that you can get here. Some of it you might already understand. You might already have heard of things like universal credit, uh, the state pension, for example. Others you might need to do a bit more research into. So you might not know what personal independence payments are or what um, income support really means. So it's useful to have an idea what you're looking for first, but also this is a good way of prompting other ideas and introducing you to parts of the welfare system that you may not already be aware of. And then you go off and find out a little bit more. So let's pick um, one of these um, uh, data sets. I'm going to look at housing benefit here. You'll notice um, as well as this area on the left showing the data sets, we've got an empty area called tables that will start to fill up in a minute. And then this large area on the right, which has some text uh, explanation at the moment about, at the moment, the whole service. And again, some link to more information. If I click on housing benefit on the left, we'll see that this area changes to, to provide an explanation specific to what I've just clicked. So we've got some information about how the data set is broken down and what data sets are available. If I click on one of these cubes, then some data will appear in this tables area here. Um, this is basically, you can almost think of these as, as kind of individual sheets in a spreadsheet um, or possibly separate databases. Now, one thing you'll notice quite a lot on Stat Explore is you will have the same data for different periods. So we can see here we've selected housing benefit data from April 2018, but there's also a separate data set for data before March 2018. And we can see a similar thing down here with pension credit as well. Um, and you'll see it elsewhere. This is because um, there have been a number of changes to the benefit system um, over the last decade, and you'll often find that the data is 
kind of interrupted or in two different parts because it's recorded in different ways, for example. So um, that's a, a challenge you might need to tackle in any story that you're telling. You might limit your analysis to, for example, here the last X number of years, or if you want to go back further, you might have to query two different data sets and deal with any um, mismatches between them. So we're looking at housing benefit caseload um, from April 2018. And um, this is information about uh, uh, payments that are made to help people pay for housing, basically. And um, we can see that there is uh, a region by caseload option at the top, region by average award, and so on. So if I click on one of these, you'll notice this open table becomes active. Um, it wasn't active before, it was greyed out. And if I click on that, it will load the table that I've selected. So this is that table HB, housing benefit, I'm assuming, 1.1 region by case load. And this is essentially a pivot table. If you've ever used pivot tables, you'll be familiar with this structure where we have some kind of category in the rows, and that's region. So region is our rows. And in each column, we've got the number of cases. So that's the case load. Um, number of housing benefit claimants in each region. We've also, um, instead of just having one set of numbers of, of claimants for each of these regions, we've actually got three for um, three different months, September, October, and November. 2023 and um, that's likely to be the, the the most recent three months for which data is available uh, i'm recording this video in march 2024 so this is about um, four months ago it is the latest data and we can assume that this will continue to update with december's data in the next few weeks so what stat explorer will do is it will present you with a particular overview of the data. Essentially, it will decide on a pivot table. So it's already created a bunch of tables and it will give you access to this um, default view, essentially. Now, the real power in Stat Explore is not in that. Um, what you really want to do is create your own inter interrogation, if you like, your own question and get uh, a specific answer to that. And you can do that in a number of ways. Um, the way that I'm going to suggest here is that, first of all, you just clear the table completely. So we're not actually going to use region by case load. We're just going to start with that and then delete it and then start from scratch. So essentially what we're doing is, is um, clearing this table in order to create a new one. So if you click clear table, it will give you a warning, just click OK. And now we have an empty table. So this table before was looking at region, but we might want to look at something else. We might want to look at housing uh, benefit claimants by gender, for example. Um, and we can do this if we hover over gender um, and we click and hold the mouse, you will see that it gives us an option to add gender to the columns, rows, or something called wafer. We're going to look at it by row. It's always good to start with your focus in each row. So I've clicked on that um, field and dragged it into this row. And when I do that, I will get a different row for each category of this particular measure, gender. I should have said, by the way, down the left here, uh, we've got a list of all of the fields, essentially, uh, in our database. So um, we were looking at region in the in the default table that had region, which is um, somewhere here. Can't even, here we go, uh, possibly that. Um, but region wasn't the only geographical way we could look at that data. Um, or indeed geography, we could look at age, gender, and various other qualities as well. 
Um, and even within these, if you click on these little arrows, you'll see um, some more detail. You could drill down to those as well. But what we've done again is click and hold or click and drag on the aspect of the data that we're interested in, data, click and drag, and that's when you get these options open up. And we've selected row. So that's taken us to this point where we've now got this uh, table, which is no longer completely empty. It's got a, a series of rows in it for each category of gender. Um, it's got a, a column for the latest month, but there are no numbers in there yet. And we might want to um, retrieve the data for that. So let's see what happens if we click on this. I'm guessing nothing's going to happen, but I'm wrong. Um, it will give us the numbers, the case load for each category. Now, what if we didn't want the latest month? What if we wanted it going further back? Well, up here under month, um, at the moment, I wonder if I explain this if it has anything ticked yeah it has this one uh, period highlighted which is the one that it's used but what if I want to see all the months in this data what if I want to see how gender has changed over the last six years well again if I click and drag on month I can choose to add that to column and what I'm going to get now is a column for every single period, every single month in this list. You can see they've all now gone bold. 68 months. So it's going to be quite a wide table. And again, um, there's no numbers yet, but I can click retrieve data and it will take a little bit longer now. But eventually I'll get the numbers for these columns and these rows. Now, because this is going to be a very wide table, I could choose to do it the other way around. I could choose to uh, clear the table again and then start with month in my rows and put gender in columns. But generally, what you're looking to do is have some combination of one of these measures in your rows and one of these measures in your columns in order to generate a, a, a table structure and then you click retrieve data to fetch the numbers for that table. So here we go we can see it runs right from April 2018 through to November 2023. We can see that the number of male claimants has gone from 1.1 million to just under 800,000 the number of female claimants has gone from 2.2 million to 1.1 million. So that looks on the surface like there's been a bigger drop in female claimants, somewhere between 40 and 50 percent, I would guess, um, than there has been in male claimants, which is, um, I wouldn't dare to hazard a guess at the percentage, but certainly less than 40 percent. We can also see how many couples have made claims. Again, that's dropped by more than a half, just at a, a quick look. And the overall number of claimants has gone from 4.2 to 2.3. So uh, again, um, less than half, but uh, it certainly looks like the, the, the number of male claimants hasn't dropped by as much as the other categories of claimants. So We've got a potential story there about change, about variation, actually, in terms of the, you know, hazing benefit claimants are down, but it's not the same in all categories. Now, to get that data into a spreadsheet, in the upper right corner, there's a download table option, and this will download it as an Excel 2007 file, so a .xlsx, and there's a limit on the number of columns and rows and the limit on the number of cells that you're going to be able to download here. Now, remember, we've got 68 months and where's gender here? Uh, we've got it says four values here. We've also got a total row as well. And I'll just go to the end and check if there's a total row at the end. There isn't. So we've actually got five rows and 68 columns. So um, that's certainly not going to be anywhere near 100,000 cells. Uh, 
so we're comfortable that's going to be okay. Click go next to that download table link and it will do one of two things. If this is a reasonably small table, which uh, you might be surprised to know this is, then it will download it immediately. If it's a much bigger table, it will put it in a queue and you you you'll download it actually probably only a minute or two later but you'll just it'll just be a little bit more complicated so let's um do a second table uh, which is going to be bigger going through that same process again and again we're going to start by clearing the table and this time i'm interested in geography but I don't want just a regional breakdown, I want a, a breakdown by local authority. So local authority is LA. Um, and let's just expand a couple of these. And they have these kind of sub branches as well. So that's where the regions came in. But we can see um, all the local authorities in the West Midlands. So that's OAs, and we've got another one that says Ward. Now you might have to Google what some of these acronyms mean. Um, so if we go to West Midlands, we'll see that it has the same authorities, but within Birmingham, I can go right down to specific wards in Birmingham. So this is, this is much more granular. And it could be that I just want to look at Birmingham, but let's just say we're going to look at all of these. So again, I'm going to go click and drag that into row. Um, ah, okay. Let's, let's remove that then. So what it's done is it's just taken the top level of all of these. So this gives me a nice excuse to show you another way of doing this, of creating this table which isn't a click and drag option. So this is a little bit fiddlier, but um, as is often the case, things that are fiddlier will give you a bit more control. So to the right of this um, LA, we've got a, a, a little, um, let's go back again, a little arrow. And let's just increase this so you can see this a bit better. Um, and what that's showing us is a, a number of different options. So um, the select all at level is is actually instructing you what to do, or it, it's, um, well, <laughs> it's trying to describe what you're actually doing at this point, which is if you click on any of these options below where it says select all at level, you will basically select all at that level. So if I select, if I click on region, it will select all categories at that level. So it will select all the regions. And if I select census output area, then that will select all of the census output areas. So I want to select all of the local authorities and I'm gonna click on local authority. And what will happen is, and you have to pay attention here, these four button, buttons rather at the top will become active. So um, they weren't actually blue before, they were kind of faded before and you couldn't click on them. Now you can click on them. And you'll notice that they correspond to the options we had with the click and drag approach earlier. We've got row, column and wafer. There's also a filter option which we didn't have before. Now something else um, before I click on one of those buttons is that it says here 352 items selected. So that's how many local authorities we've selected. And we could probably see it if we drilled down far enough. If I went down to West Midlands, we can see now all of those local authorities in the West Midlands are ticked, all of the local authorities in the East Midlands are ticked and so on. They are actually selected, we just couldn't see it unless we expand these various menus. So 352 different authorities have been selected. To add those to our table, we just need to click on row. 
and after a moment we'll get that list of over 352 local authorities. Now again, um, if we want to put months in the columns, we can do that like we did before. So we click and click and drag and put it in column like that. But again, um, we could click on this right facing arrow, select all at level, there's only one level, month, and click on column. And this will, um, uh, it would add it to the table. Now this is the point at which the difference between using guest mode and using uh, and, and creating an account becomes evident. So this is where you do need to log into your account to create a larger table. Um, so I'm not going to um, log into my account uh, and, and go through that whole process as part of this video, but hopefully this, this shows you what you can do in terms of the different ways of constructing the tables. So in, instead of selecting all months, we'll do something else. We will um, let's see if there's a way of unselecting all of these. Um, let's just say we're interested in, um, let's just remove Oh. Let's do gender instead. I've done it again anyway. Right, as is always the solution, start again. And we're going to do the LAs again, select all at local authority level, add those to rows. And now if I go to month, this is empty again. So let's just say we're interested, uh, not in 2018, we're interested in, let's say the last six months. So we can manually tick those and then add those as columns. Now let's see if that's still too big, no. So we've got the last six months data and the 300 odd local authorities. So we've built a table the same way. We just need to retrieve the data for that. And there we have the numbers. And again, we can download that by just clicking go in the upper right corner. So that's how to get data out of Stat Explore. Just to recap, if I go back home again, we start with this list of data sets on the left. Um, you click on one of these bits of interest. It might be child maintenance, for example. Um, and you click on one of the, the data sets within those. Um, you then click on the table of interest and open that table. And then it will give you a default view, which is the description of uh, parents by quarter, paying parents by quarter. But what you would generally do is clear this table and start building your own using the measures on the left. To some extent, it might not matter which table you pick because the, sometimes there are multiple tables using the same data. Um, and you can just use the, the data underlying that, which is available on the left. So. We might be interested in um, method of payment, let's say, and add that to our table. And we might be interested in how different age bands are using that. So again, I'm going to put that in columns and retrieve the data. Don't forget that step to bring in the numbers for these different payment types. So we would probably expect that certain age groups are using certain types of payment methods more than others. And we download in the top. So that's um, hopefully a, a, a useful guide to getting data out of Stat Explorer. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, I can always record another video to go through that. And as I indicated earlier, if you are 
generating large tables, that's probably the point at which you may need to register and create an account. It is free to do so. Um, it's just a little bit of extra work and you'll need to log in um, and recreate your table.